Good evening and welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Friday, the 11th of March. Indian Prime Minister Modi holds grand roadshow after BJP's massive win in state elections. Pakistanis suffer under high inflation, power tariff hiked again. And youth in India's Kashmir Valley creates art from discarded bones. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday held a massive road show in his home state Gujarat a day after his Bharatiya Janata Party won elections in four out of five states with sweeping majority. The poll outcome, especially in the most populous Uttar Pradesh state, is being seen as a barometer for national elections due in 2024. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday held a massive roadshow in Ahmedabad in his home state Gujarat, a day after his BJP, the Bharatiya Janata Party, won elections in four out of five states. Standing atop a decorated vehicle, Modi showed victory signed and waved at people, including BJP supporters, during the 10-kilometer-long roadshow as part of his two-day Gujarat visit. The BJP won regional assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh, Manipur, Goa and Uttarakhand states. The poll outcome, especially in the most populous Uttar Pradesh, is being seen as a barometer for national elections due in 2024. The Prime Minister also addressed a huge gathering of members of the Panchayat Raj, a local self-government of villages in India. Gujarat is slated to hold assembly election later this year. Meanwhile, Bhagwant Maan, the Aam Aadmi Party's chief minister candidate for Northern Punjab state, met party's national convener and Delhi chief minister Arvind Kejriwal in New Delhi on Friday. The Aam Aadmi Party grabbed a landslide victory in Punjab, wiping out the incumbent Congress party. Party leaders have said they are ready to take on the BJP nationally. Hundreds of Indians who were evacuated from war-torn Ukraine arrived in their home country from Poland on Friday. Most of the citizens who arrived were from Ukrainian city of Sumy that has been witnessing heavy shelling and intense exchange of fire between Russians and Ukrainian forces. Indian Air Force aircraft carrying 213 students arrived at Hinden Air Base in Ghaziabad city, while two other special flights landed in capital, New Delhi. An Indian Air Force aircraft from Poland carrying Indian citizens evacuated from northeastern Ukrainian city Sumy landed in India's northern Ghaziabad city on Friday. 213 Indian students arrived at Ghaziabad's Hinden Air Base. Sumy has been witnessing heavy shelling and intense exchange of fire between Russians and Ukrainian forces for the last several days. As part of its Operation Ganga evacuation effort, India has rescued trapped individuals, especially students from numerous other countries since Russia attacked Ukraine three weeks ago. From Sumi, it was like uh, it was a very hazardous travel, but the Indian government and the Ministry of External Affairs and also the Indian Embassy in Ukraine made our made our travel very much easier because they found the best route from us from reach from Sumi to Poltava. More flights carrying many Indian students from Sumi also landed at Indira Gandhi International Airport in capital New Delhi on Friday. The students were evacuated from Sumi on a special train and brought back to Poland and flown back to India from there. India has evacuated over 20,000 of its citizens from war-hit Ukraine under Operation Ganga. But उससे पहले खराब थे और उसके आने के बाद भी हमने सुना है कि बहुत हालत खराब हो गए हैं। उससे पहले हम बॉम्ब की आवाज सुनते थे, शेलिंग होती थी, फायरिंग होती थी। But जैसे-जैसे हमने मैनेज किया वहाँ से और अपने आप को स्ट्रॉंग रखा, बस बिलीव किया कि इंबेसी में जल्दी निकालेगी और आज हम यहाँ India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Friday lauded authorities who facilitated the smooth conduct of Operation Ganga. He also thanked Ukraine's neighbors Romania, Hungary, Poland, Slovakia and Moldova for their exceptional support in the evacuation process. Meanwhile, Indian Embassy in Russia in an advisory on Friday said that certain disruption of banking services in Russia and direct flight connectivity from Russia to India is taking place. If students have concerns regarding these aspects and would like to travel back to India, they may consider doing so. 
And a news from Pakistan, opposition Jamiat Ulema e Islam Fazl Chief Molana Fazlur Rahman on Friday called off plans to block highways across Pakistan after parliamentarians and workers of his party who were arrested during a night raid at the parliament lodges were released by the Islamabad police. This came as the parliament is scheduled to vote for a no-confidence motion against Prime Minister Imran Khan later this month. Pakistan's Jamiat Ulema Islam Fazl or JUIF Chief Maulana Fazlur Rahman has abandoned plans to block highways across the country after lawmakers and workers of the party who were arrested on Thursday night during a raid at parliament lodges were released by local police on Friday amid massive protests. On Thursday, a heavy contingent of police raided the parliament lodges to expel and arrest members of JUIF who allegedly made it to the high security zone for providing security to opposition lawmakers ahead of a vote on no-confidence motion later this month. At least four lawmakers were also reportedly arrested along with more than a dozen workers. Rahman condemned the police action and said they baselessly tortured, dragged and arrested elected representatives of the public and presented a false narrative to the public. <laughs> The joint opposition filed a no-confidence motion against PM Imran Khan in the National Assembly on Tuesday over his mismanagement of the economy and rising inflation. The Speaker is expected to call a session by March 22, while voting on the motion has been scheduled between March 26 and 30. And more news from Pakistan. Residents in Pakistan's financial capital, Karachi, have lamented they are fed up of the ever-rising inflation in the country. All the Prime Minister Imran Khan announced a cut in electricity prices last week and pledged to freeze the new rates. Par tariff was hiked again on Thursday by around 6 rupees per unit. The opposition has termed the move a culmination of cruelty, abuse and brutality. Residents in Pakistan's Karachi have said they are fed up of soaring inflation that has made life difficult and shattered their faith in Prime Minister Imran Khan. PM Khan last week announced a cut in fuel prices by Rs 10 and electricity by Rs 5. But that has come as only slight relief as prices of food items have stayed on an upward trajectory. The relief measure is being seen as a populist move amid opposition protests over frequent price hike. Locals said the government has failed to take account of market forces that lead to ever-increasing commodity prices. पेट्रोल कम हो गया है तो जो चीजें बढ़ाई हुई है पेट्रोल के हिसाब से वो कम नहीं हुई। In the latest on Thursday, power tariff was again hiked across Pakistan by rupees 5.94 per unit. Opposition PMLN party president Shahbaz Sharif termed the move a U-turn by Imran Khan, who had pledged to freeze the new rates until the next budget in June. Sharif said it is the culmination of cruelty, abuse and brutality on the public already under pressure due to soaring inflation. Moving on, U.S. lawmaker Scott Perry has introduced a bill in the Congress that seeks to designate Pakistan as a state sponsor of terrorism. The bill has now been referred to the U.S. House Committee on Foreign Affairs. The proposed sanctions include restrictions on foreign assistance and miscellaneous financial and other restrictions. U.S. lawmaker Scott Perry this week introduced a bill titled Stopping Pakistani Terror Act in the Congress that seeks to designate Pakistan as a state sponsor of terrorism. The bill tabled in the House of Representatives on March 8 read to provide for the designation of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan as a state sponsor of terrorism and for other purposes. The bill has been referred to the Committee on Foreign Affairs. The main categories of sanctions include restrictions on U.S. foreign assistance, a ban on defense exports and sales, financial transactions and others. 
The development comes days after the global terror financing watchdog FATF, the Financial Action Task Force, retained Islamabad on the grey list over inadequate actions on probing and prosecuting terrorists. FATF on March 5 also directed Pakistan to take stringent measures to crack down on UN-designated terrorist groups and stop terror financing. Sri Lanka is mourning the death of its famous Indian tusker, Nadun Gumawa Raja, which died in the early hours of Monday following a brief illness and was named a national treasure by President Gotabaya Rajapaksa. 69-year-old Raja was known widely as the towering tusker that carried the casket containing the sacred tooth relic at the Parahera Festival or annual pageant in Kandy district. He was considered to be the largest tamed elephant in Asia and was 10.5 feet tall. Scores of people, including children and Buddhist priests, bid adieu to Raja, offering prayers at the site where it was laid. Raja was born in India and had been gifted to Sri Lanka by an Indian prince. Meanwhile, authorities said that Raja's remains will be stuffed and preserved for posterity. Elephants are considered as sacred animals in Sri Lanka and often participate in religious ceremonies and rituals. And a 22-year-old artist in India's Jammu and Kashmir has been creating beautiful art pieces including intrinsic ornaments and articles of house decor out of discarded animal bones. He believes his art can help decrease use of metals which have adverse effects on the environment. Take a look. 22-year-old student and a bone carver, Aziz Ul Rahman, from India's Jammu and Kashmir has been creating unique art pieces from scrap bones. Although Aziz has always been interested in art, he says he developed this craft two years ago. As the intake of meat consumption is high in Kashmir amid cold weather, Aziz says he finds an easy supply of bones and skulls from butchers free of cost and carves intrinsic ornaments, knives and other house decors out of them. Aziz believes his art can help preserve the traditional bone craft of Kashmir and to lower metal pollution and create a healthier and safer environment. <laughs> अगर इन हड्डियों को हम अच्छे से यूज करें बिना फेंक के हम इसके चीजें बना सकते हैं जैसे कि ऑर्नामेंट्स बना सकते हैं डेकोरेटिव पीसेस बना सकते हैं इससे क्या होगा कि जो मतलब एग्जॉस्टेबल रिसोर्सेज है जैसे कि मेटल्स है बाकी चीजें हैं मतलब उन पे कम असर पड़ेगा डेली इनटेक जो मीट का है वो बहुत है यहां पे तो हड्डियां भी होंगी उसके साथ अगर हम हड्डियों को अच्छे से यूटिलाइज करें तो इसका मतलब ब्रॉडर स्कोप मिल सकता है यहां पे टू रिकॉर्ड दीस आर्ट पीसेस आजिस यूजेस अ पायरोग्राफी टेक्निक फ्री हैंडेड आर्ट ऑफ डेकोरेटिंग विद बर्न मार्क्स रिजल्टिंग फ्रॉम द कंट्रोल एप्लीकेशन ऑफ अ हीटेड ऑब्जेक्ट सच एज अ पोकर ही यूजेस हैंड टूल्स टू मेक हिज आर्ट पीसेस सच एज प्लायर्स सैंड पेपर एंड हैंड सो well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Indian Prime Minister Modi holds grand roadshow after BJP's massive win in state elections. Pakistanis suffer under high inflation, power tariff hiked again. And youth in India's Kashmir Valley creates art from discarded bones. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.